Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Komal. I apologize about my voice. I am slightly sick, but I hope I can be as loud and clear as possible. Today, I'll be presenting um, our research that compares the association for potentially preventable and non-potentially preventable emergency department transfers for nursing home residents. Hmm. So here's a brief breakdown of everything I'll be discussing today. I'm going to start this presentation with an ED transfer case. It's a little bit easier to understand the concept that I'm going to be presenting. So imagine you're a nursing home resident who's arrived to the emergency department. You have a history of congestive heart failure, had diabetes, and are presenting to the emergency department due to pneumonia. This condition would be defined as a potentially preventable reason for an ED transfer. So what is a potentially preventable ED transfer? Well, a potentially preventable ED transfer, which is also known as an ambulatory care sensitive ED visit, is defined as an ED transfer that is associated with conditions that may have been prevented entirely or managed better at the nursing home facility. Therefore, a non-potentially preventable emergency department transfer are transfers which could not be managed at the nursing home and acute care was deemed to be necessary. This led us to our research question, which nursing home resident characteristics are associated with a potentially preventable and not potentially preventable emergency department transfer? So now I'm gonna briefly introduce this topic. Approximately six to 8% of nursing home residents are transferred into the emergency department within the first three months after admission. And of these transfers, four to 5% are defined as potentially preventable. Therefore, really understanding which nursing home resident characteristics are associated with these non-PPEDs and PPED transfers will allow us to create models which can help us identify residents which are at high risk of a potentially preventable emergency department transfer at admission into a nursing home facilities. This will allow us to develop care plans or other risk models, which can potentially help us manage these potentially preventable emergency department transfers. Now I'll discuss the methods for our study. So to answer this question, we conducted a population level retrospective cohort study on Ontario nursing home residents and their emergency department transfer data from January 1st, 2017 to, Jan to December 31st, 2018, using the RIE data set and the National Ambulatory Care, Sense, Care Reporting System, house.ices. The cohort included over 56,000 nursing home residents. However, only 3,498 actually experienced a PPED and 9,331 ex experienced a non-PPED. We included all nursing home residents that reside in Ontario with a complete admission assessment, excluded those that had an invalid identification number, just so we can trace them, um, those residing in small facilities or facilities with less than 25 beds, just because the objectives of care are very different at those facilities. For a statistical analysis, we used cumulative incident functions and Cox regressions to compare resident characteristics between residents that were transferred for a potentially preventable ED visit and a non-potentially preventable ED visit within the first 92 days of admission. Here, a key uh, point is that PPEDs were defined using the International Classification of Disease version 10 Canadian code. Um, these are specific to Canada, like I mentioned, and this is very important because this is the only definition that we'll be using for PPEDs in this project. So now I'll discuss the results of our study. Here I've shared some descriptive analytics. Um, the whole cohort comparing those who actually experienced an emergency department compared to those that did not experience emergency department transfer at all. Um, as you can see, some of the key variables I'd like to highlight are that those that have a do not resuscitate or a do not hospitalize directive were less likely to be transferred to the em emergency department. Surprisingly, those that have a that have experienced a fall or an injury in the last 30 days were also less likely to be transferred to the emergency department. And similar to what the literature has said before, those with Alzheimer's or dementia were less likely to be transferred to the ED. From our cohort, approximately 22.7% of residents experienced an ED transfer within the first 92 days of admission. So then I can calculate a cumulative incident function to understand the probability of an ED transfer for both outcomes. The cumulative incident function of a PPED transfer was 6.25. And for a non-PPED, it was 16.8. So as you can see, the CIF is higher for those experiencing a non-PPED transfer, which is consistent with the literature. 
I then create a Cox model for both PPED and non-PPED. After adjusting the variable, after adjustment, 14 out of 18 resident characteristics or variables in the model were associated in the same direction with a PPED and a non-PPED, indicating that both models were very similar. Resident characteristics associated with a greater risk for a PPED transfer are pneumonia, which had a hazard ratio of 1.48, and oxygen therapy with a hazard ratio of 1.88. Resident characteristics associated with a greater risk of a non-potentially preventable ED transfer were only experiencing a change in mood with a hazard ratio of 1.09 and delirium with a hazard ratio of 1.08. As you can see in both models, the four variables that were different between the two models were not significant. So this is something to keep in mind. Now, to understand the goodness of fit, I calculated the Harold C index to see if there was actually such a, a, a significant uh, goodness of fit. Um, as you can see, there's very poor discriminability with a PPED of 0.54 and a non-PPED of 0.55. To be honest, this is probably as good as guessing. Now I want to discuss the results in further detail. So the association between resident characteristics tended to be similar between potentially preventable ED transfers and non-potentially preventable ED transfers. Though these nursing home residents' ED transfers are frequently categorized as PPED or non-PPED, these definitions may not be able to truly discriminate these transfers from the perspective of a nursing home. Future studies should really look at assessing cl clinical utility of using ED transfer categorizations, so non-PPED versus PPED, um, at acute care facilities for nursing home residents. However, some limitations include the use of secondary data, as, such as the fact that non-MDS variables might have been more influential in this model, um, but this was not collected. Reasons for the transfer were unknown, and new residents transferred from another facility were not documented. Now, going back to our case study, although these results don't sound promising, there's a very important takeaway from this analysis. That is, whether the potentially preventable emergency department transfer definition should be used for nursing home residents transferred to the ED in the first place. Since, although this wasn't the goal of the study, this was an important thing to take away since the definition is frequently used for research and clinical practice, and now we know that it might not accurately be classifying residents who have received acute care. So should we, so how, so should now, how do we know if these, if in our case, those that were transferred due to pneumonia should actually be classified as a non-PPED transfer? How should the classification be made such that the resident can be effectively categorized when building risk models. Can we use this information to create a stronger PPED definition? And in our case, the residents that have complex conditions that present to the emergency department, are they actually being classified accurately, such as our pneumonia resident? These are all questions that arise from the results of the study. And as we can see that there's a lot of information that we were able to gather, um, and it's very interesting to understand how PPEDs are, are actually described, keeping in mind that only the ICD-10 definitions were used when classifying in this project. It's important to test out all the other potentially preventable definitions, as well as looking at nursing home residents that are transferred for different reasons and keep taking the limitations of the study into consideration when rebuilding this model. With that, I'd like to thank you for listening to my presentation. Please let me know if you have any questions um, or if you'd like to discuss anything related to this project in greater detail, please free, feel free to contact me by email or Twitter like I've posted here. Thanks.